Welcome back adventurers to a new adventure. We're starting a new game on the channel and this game has been released just a few days ago. I have taken a few days um, also for real life concerns but also to uh, explore the game a little bit so that I'm not completely lost. Um, I haven't had uh, access before the release like some other youtubers because i'm just a really small channel so i'm going into this uh, pretty fresh and it is a complex game that i can tell you so um yeah i'm far from an expert at this yet so i will be making mistakes please feel free to point them out i am um, i'm very open to suggestions um I want to learn the game. That's basically the goal of this series. It's called Let's Get Educated. And that is because it is one of the achievements. I'm not sure if you can see this is very grayed out. But there is an achievement called Educated. Which is the complete the learned game objective. So that is what we're going to do. I have, as I said, explored a little bit here. But we're starting a new game. And here we have different objectives. We can go for the sandbox and just start a game without an objective and do our own thing. That's nice. And it has some other uh, slightly more guided uh, ways of playing the game. We're going to learn the game. And we get some suggestions here of countries to start with. But you can also select any country, which is very nice. So you can do any country you want. And still get the journal entries that will guide you towards learning the game. That's very nice. Also, another thing, well, I'll get to that. We're gonna go with uh, Chile. I thought that would be interesting. Um, Chile is embarking on a process of political centralization, concentrating power into the hands of the government and the church. What does the future hold for Chile? Well, maybe we'll take it another way. We'll see what we can do. And that is what we want. And then we have achievements available even though we're not using Iron Man mode. That is something new with Victoria 3 that was not possible with previous um, Paradox games. So we are happy with that. Uh, achievements allowed, of course. Game rules. Let's start with Lenient. Low aggression, formable nations, all. Yeah, this is all good. Nothing to change here. So, Chile. And then let's start the game. Welcome to the Age of Progress. The year is 1836. Jose Joaquin Prieto is General of Chile. The Industrial Revolution is well underway, bringing cataclysmic social change along with it. More than 20 years have passed since the Congress of Vienna imposed some semblance of order upon Europe, and unrest is once again starting to brew among the great powers. It will be up to you to guide Chile to glory over the following a century. There is no one way to win in Victoria 3. You set your own goals and experience different stories in the process of pursuing them. And that is what we are going to do. So our goal is um, to learn the game, to get the achievement of um, completing this uh, tutorial. Um, our goal is also to have a healthy economy. Right now we have some problem here with bureaucracy. There's a deficit. Um, we are still making money. But it's not easy to keep making money. So let's see what we can do about that. Uh, so we want a healthy economy and our rank currently of uh, how strong our country is, I guess, compared to other countries is currently 35 so we want at least to stay at that not go to a lower rank so we want to stay at 35 or improve that we are currently a minor power and we want to stay a minor power there is no reason for us to go for major power um, maybe if we keep playing this into towards the end then we'll see yes but currently 
Um, it's enough of a struggle just to keep the economy running, so... Um, we're gonna go for speed 4 or 5, because as a small country there is not a lot going on, at least in the early stages. So, we'll see about that. Nothing under construction, yeah. We will change that. We definitely need to do something about that bureaucracy. Okay. Um, core gameplay. Victoria 3 is about taking charge of growing and shaping a Victorian era country with a primary, primary focus on economics and politics. You will be constructing a society of your own imagination while overcoming internal and external obstacles. Politics, economics, diplomacy and war are all tools to that end, but must be employed with care, as your population have needs and desires of their own. Your decisions will impact them, and they will in turn attempt to influence you. Victoria 3 is a dynamic simulation with many moving parts. All your actions will have consequences, even unintended ones. This is normal and expected. You do not have to learn how everything works before you play. That would be nearly impossible, I think. Take it slow and learn from your mistakes and you will soon be an expert policy maker. Well, I certainly hope so. Um, what's next? Okay, this is just mechanics. Uh, there will be underlined text, that is a tooltip, and tooltips can have a nested tooltips and so on. That is all fine. Capacities. Okay, these are the... Th things at the top so we have bureaucracy authority and influence three capacities measure different aspects of your country's power mouse over the orange text to get more information capacities originate from some government building certain laws and your rank respectively you get to decide how to allocate them to further your interests unspent capacity will provide a minor boost to one aspect of your country while overspending will incur a major penalty so we want to keep this in the green that is good there could be a lot in the green and we get some kind of boost but we definitely don't want them to be in the red because then we have uh, we will incur major penalties. Let me take a sip of my coffee here. Mm. Um. Yeah. Treasury money in the treasury is used to fund state apparatus. As you can see here, the vast majority of money in your country is circulated by buildings and pops and is outside your direct control. Buildings and pops can be taxed to grow and improve your economy, decrease your expenses by minimizing the operating costs of government buildings. The balance shown in the top bar reflect a weekly change. So this is a weekly income of 1.5k. We also have some gold reserves. We have an investment pool that currently is empty. Um, so this is when our pops, our population groups, make money. They put some of that money possibly in the investment pool. And that can then be used again to build buildings and stuff. So we want this investment pool to grow, if possible. So we have national revenue, national expenses. We're currently, we're at a positive balance, so that is good, but that is definitely going to change. And that is where it's very easy to go wrong. Because you want to build, and you want to build faster, and that means you have to buy more stuff. And there goes your money. And then, of course, you could raise taxes, but people, for some reason, don't like to pay more taxes. And then they become uh, radicalized, which we will see over there. Um, okay. On the left side of the screen, a number of buttons can take you to screen showing an overview of different aspects of Chile. So we have politics, we have our budget, buildings, market, military, and some other stuff. The journal is important. They will guide us to that. Um, all right. And then there are lenses here at the bottom. They're kind of big because otherwise you might not even notice them, but they are important. 
These provide easy access to actions you can take to shape your country combined with information needed to make good decisions. Production is for expanding industries to produce goods and provides details about your economic output. Politics is for managing the government and your population. Provides details about the power balance in your country. Diplomacy for dealing with other countries. A military for dealing with other countries in a somewhat more violent way and trade for dealing with other countries in a much more friendly way. Let's both make money. That sounds good. Open the lens interface by clicking any of the lens buttons. So here we have, for example, our trade lens. And we can see the actions we can take. We can imp start import routes with other countries and export routes for the stuff that we make. Nice. Okay. Um, close the lens interface really now okay and then we can adjust the speed and we can pause by hitting the space bar okay unpause the game and I only do that for one second because uh, well we could actually unpause but no we have stuff to take care of immediately at the start First off, let's take stock of what is happening in our country. So we are Chile here. We are comprised of a couple of states. And we are bordered by Argentina here, who is currently cooperative. So they are positive as well as Bolivia to the north. And then we have a couple of um, so-called decentralized powers to our west and south that uh, we can't deal with directly as of yet. Now, one thing that's happening here, you can see 250 days, that is our colonization. So we start with colonizing um, this bit. Yeah, it doesn't light up very nicely, but the, um, the eastern side, which is like in real life, currently part of Chile. So yes, we do want our Cania. And we might also try to get Patagonia. But that's a long process. And if we zoom in, we can see what is happening here. So here we are expanding into this territory. Uh, we have a port here? No, we don't have a port here. Some plantations, maybe. A settlement. Another city. And then towards the north we get our capital, Santiago. Which is in the thumbnail. And our port of Valparaiso. Santiago has uh, some buildings. This is, uh, of course, where everything is happening currently. We have a trade center. We have some government administration and a tooling workshop. We have some gold mines as well. That is very nice. And an iron mine. Very important. We have some farming going on. And uh, a port, naval base, and some military barracks. That is all good. Our population is currently almost a million. And this is Santiago. So two-thirds of our population lives in the capital city. So we need, we need to focus most of our activity, at least initially, on the capital. We have a shortage of men of wars. Okay, we yeah, we're not constructing anything. Uh, we need convoys in our trade routes. We have expensive military goods. Okay, and we have these in reserve, meaning we don't have generals or admirals to lead them. Let's have a look at our politics, at our government. So we have a junta. Right, there is a general that's currently leading the government and we have some interest groups here 
that will want certain laws enacted and stuff like that. So I think that is the first thing we want to do is to reform our government and get the industrialists in. It gives us more legitimacy. Meaning we can enact laws faster if they are supported, of course, by the armed forces and the industrialists. And we have some other groups that I do not want in my government at this point. Even though they are happy, they may want things that would take us in a different direction. Intelligentsia, I would ideally want in our government, but they want all kinds of advanced liberalizations and stuff that will be hard to enact. So, they will have to wait. Okay, what do the industrialists want? For example, they are quite powerful, um, and now this guy is a moderate, that is good. They are in favor of these laws. I don't think we want to change our economic system yet. They are in favor of uh, colonia colonization, religious schools, or private schools, or pro they're just in favor of education. And that is where we want to go. We want to get educated, and we want our people to get educated as well. And they're in favor of no migration control. So anybody who wants to move into Chile should be able to just come and work. That might also be something that um, we might want. All right. We might even want to bolster them, but that takes... Influence? No. Authority. 200 authority. Okay. Then, let's get back here. Um, so we have colonial growth generation. That is very nice. We want schools. Now, currently, we can't do anything. I guess we need to uh, unpause for that. Okay, the journal. You have just been given your first tutorial challenge. We have paused the game to give you time to read. Oh, how nice. Remember to unpause using the speed controls or the space bar when you're ready to resume. Uh, put the journal by clicking the highlighted button on the left to begin. Let's do that. Okay, we need to expand a basic building. The livestock ranches in Santiago. Okay. You must close your car. I understand. We can do that by going to Santiago. We are at, we are at Santiago. And then the building. And we need to look for the livestock ranches. They are here. And just expand them. Now we can just click on that and then expand it this way. Alright. Then we are starting to build livestock ranches. That is nice, but... I, I'm not sure that is that important, to be honest. But it is important for our achievement, so let's do that anyway. What I want is to do something about the bureaucracy. So this government administration has now a simple organization, and I think we should go for filing cabinets. Of course, that means we need more paper, and paper will be more expensive. But I think it's important that we get this in the positive, so let's do that. Yeah, fix capacity deficit, restore bureaucracy balance, that's the other thing here, so that's great. Let's do that. Okay, so we... 
also have the messages here. That has been added to the journal. That is this one. We already have the green here. We have completion in progress. So we did the thing, but we need to keep doing the thing for four weeks. And some technologies are spreading. That's the other thing we need to look at. Technology. Um, I do think we want to focus on production technologies um, because we already have the basic uh, social technologies like urban planning and colonization. We will want to get to modern sewage and uh, central archives. Maybe empiricism is good for our education system. But yeah, military advancements, I'm not so sure about that. I hope we can avoid war with our neighbors for a long time. So, we are being exposed to the lathe innovation um, from our neighbors. So, we do not really need to worry about this. What is that number? From technology spread, yeah. We're currently working on central archives. Where is that? That's a society one, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, central archives, we do want that in eventually but it, this will take five years to research it has some good um, benefits taxation capacity and so on but I don't think we need this right up front I think we want the atmospheric engine I would do the lathe if we weren't already being exposed to that so let's go for this we might also want intensive agriculture. But let's do this because that will unlock the water tube boiler, which improves a lot of stuff and railways, which is very important to move stuff around. What is here? Yeah, paper is now expensive. Who would have thought? Okay. If paper is that expensive, maybe we can import more of it. Mm -hmm. So this will bring the price down to 37 pounds for us. That's good. And the same here with Britain. I'm thinking we want the British market, and that brings me to uh, the diplomacy, diplomatic lands. We have good um, cooperation with Great Britain, and I think I want to improve our relations. They're now neutral. Maybe in the future we can get a trade agreement. Oh, we can already. No, they would not accept. Maybe we can get a trade agreement in the future. Maybe even a defensive pact or something. That would be nice. Declare interest. We have an interest in the Andes. And that's all we can do. How about an interest in La Plata? Because Argentina... Argentina is also part of the Andes. Okay. Yeah, we might want a trade agreement. That would be easy. Uh, and our diplomatic place, but that's more aggressive. If we want a trade agreement. Uh, to make it easier to get stuff from them. So I'm going to do this. We still have more influence. So Bolivia. 
Ooh. Our relations are poor. Yeah. But now we are again at a bureaucracy deficit. Trade routes, okay. Some of our trade routes are not really helping us. Yes, because we started another trade route to import paper. And now this one is no longer um, having the green check mark. What about this, the clippers? Can we uh, take that away? This would become a lot more expensive if we undo this. Well, let's see. I think we need paper more at this point. All right, there we go. All right, that's not too bad. It is going down now. But we still have gold reserves. And it is going down. Okay, fixed capacity deficit completed. Nice work. That is great. Expand the basic building. That's going to take time. No, that's not what I wanted. Over here, construction queue. Yeah. Let's click on the wrong thing there. And there's lots of rivalries and interests being declared and stuff like that that hopefully aren't immediately relevant to us. So this is going to take 30 weeks. That's a long time. Um, Construction building. Because there is a way to possibly improve. Oh, here, construction sector. We need to build one. And that would mean employing lots of people, which means we need to pay them, which means our balance is going down.
we could possibly get rain from the Argentinian market that would um, open up some um, convoys. We need to more tooling industry. Green is cheaper, that's good. The jewel. Francisco de Vidal has challenged Angerman Lynch to a duel to the death. The aura surrounding the two figures is like something out of a romantic novel. Angerman Lynch smiles. He has been rehearsing this moment before falling asleep. Francisco de Vidal, you are a foolish fool. Your insults cannot go unanswered. Pick up a weapon of choice and we shall meet tomorrow. So who are these people? He is um, from the Armed Forces Interest Group. Okay. And he is a disliked politician from the trade unions. Mm. Let them fight. We should stop it. Or we should ban dueling, and that would not be approved by the armed forces. It would be approved by the intelligentsia. But we are the armed forces, so we wouldn't go against that. No, let them fight. And German Lynch has died. That's the best possible outcome. Uh, yeah, we know paper is expensive. Okay, we should probably put something more in the outliner, like our markets. Um, okay. Yeah. What about our military? We don't have any generals. We could recruit one. That's probably a good idea. And we have a Catholic or somebody from the armed forces. Namely, Santiago de Vidal. He's ambitious and a mountain combat expert. Um, I think we will go with Santiago de Vidal. And then... Uh, how about a navy? Both are from the Armed Forces Interest Group. One is Imperious and a Traditionalist, and the other is Wrathful. I think we will recruit this one because um, better offense, defense, morale damage, and this one has um, morale recovery penalty, though it's also morale damage protection. So, minus uh, 75 percent decree cost, and this one. Oh, as interest group leader, minus two opposition interest group approval. Mm -hmm. No, I think we'll go with uh, with him. Eusebio de la Cruz. Okay. So. And that has brought us to rank at 32. Useful, I guess. How are we doing with building this? Ten weeks? Okay. Let's get to it. Petit bourgeoisie is now influential. Um, can we have a look at the interest groups? In our outliner. There we go, yeah. And the markets is already there, the commanders. We do not really care about I had a okay. No longer protects technology, okay. 
diplomatic play start Great Britain has made uh, started a make puppet diplomatic play against Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Let's go. Oh, expanded basic building has completed. Livestock Ranch in Santiago are complete. That is great. And industrialists engines of progress have activated. Again, that is good. Okay, so let's have a look at the livestock ranches. So we have two in Santiago, one in Los Rios. And currently they're set to simple ranching. We could, with the right technology, go for intensive grazing. Okay. Maybe with the um, butchering tools we'll have more meat. And the price of tools doesn't raise too much. Yeah, let's keep them simple for now. So we want change any production method on wheat farms in Santiago. Okay. They're now set to less grain and more wine. We only have this one. We can also do fruit and sugar or just more grain. What is the price of grain anyway? It's kind of high. Isn't it? No, it's the price is low. The, the production is high. We have more sell orders than buy orders. Okay. So we don't need to make more grain at the moment. So let's just change this to this. Make more sugar and fruit. What's happening here? Ah, we have one in Santiago that is has low productivity. Is that because of uh, that? Because we changed this. Hmm. Can we click through there? There. We still have cash reserves, but the productivity is really low. We're making more meat, that means the price of meat is lower, that means they, the ranchers make less money. It's not subsidized. We could subsidize it, but now we are like losing money. Fast. Um, I guess we should go back to this. Does that change it? Productivity is going up. Still having a low balance. Okay, I think um, I think we need to do something about this. We're still okay. But we are losing money. So, budget. I do not want to change the general taxes or even the wages. That has too much potential for um, making more radicals. Social unrest. So, let's do some uh, sin tax. Right, we have uh, we have some authority that we can use. So, uh, services will give us good money and liquor. And we could even put some on tobacco. All right. That brings us into positive again, but. We need to do something about 
this. Uh, uh so the general and the uh, admiral are also taking bureaucracy. Trade routes. There are some inactive ones here. Well, let's cancel these then. That brings us back into positive. But then we'll have a shortage, right? Tools are expensive. Nothing under construction. Can we um, build or expand a tooling workshop? I'm ready to do pig iron tools. Either that or build one in our in Los Rios. They only have logging camps there. Oh no. So, uh, ranches and plantations. Yeah, I think uh, we want a tooling workshop here. 113 weeks. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. And if we do that here in Santiago, also 113 weeks. Well, we need more tools. So, if the productivity is going really low, we could subsidize it. Let's see. So right now, wood is cheap, fabric is cheap, grain is cheap, that's all good for us. Tools are expensive. That's our furniture and clothes, and that makes our Pops, I'm happy. Yeah, standard of living. How is a standard of living going? It went up a little, but now it's pretty stationary. They pay a lot for clothes and liquor, but they should just drink less. They pay a lot for clothes and grain. Is there anything we can do about the clothes? We don't have any textile mills, so it's all about the import there. Let's have a look at this price report. There are no significant changes. Okay. Um, we are importing clothes. We don't have enough convoys available, but we don't need convoys if we take them from the Argentinian or Bolivian market, right? But we do need bureaucracy, we have enough. Okay, let's do that. So right now, clothes. Um, I need to go here then again? No. Market. Yes, this is it. Clothes. 33 pounds. There's still a need for more clothes. Expand uh, tobacco plantations, really, in Los Rios. Okay, in Los Rios. Okay. 
Los Rios tobacco plantations. Expand. Alright, let's do that. And the lathe is unlocked. That is nice. So we see the industrialists have really grown in uh, in power. They're they're about equal with the armed forces. And the uh, petit bourgeoisie has dropped. Okay, atmospheric engine unlocked. That's very nice. Uh, how are we doing with the law? We haven't. Oh, we, we couldn't choose the law that we want. Wanted. Why? Why? Doesn't that stay? No, it stays. Okay, enable the education institution. This is allowed by total separation. Yeah. So this is supported by the Catholic Church. Ah, okay. So for religious schools, we need to invite the Catholic Church into our government. If we want public schools, then we require empiricism and no longer having state religion. Hmm. That will take much longer. So if we want to no longer have state religion, we need to invite the intelligentsia into our government. And we need empiricism. Shall we try that, or shall we stick with the power of the church and maybe get religious schools to start with? It would be easier, it would be faster to get. But ideally we want public schools. Industrialists want public schools as well, so there is good support for this, but we must not have state religion. I kind of want to go for this, though it makes more sense to say, all right, Catholic Church is powerful, right? Well, not that powerful. Not that powerful. They are more powerful. What do they want? They're anti-clerical, the Republican, anti-slavery, that's all good. They have a moderate leader who is direct and a diplomat. That's that's nice. Right? Um They want suffrage, multiculturalism, freedom of conscience, public schools, right of assembly. They want a lot of liberalizations and stuff like that. But, yeah. Well, if they can um, make compromises. That could work. That could work. So I am thinking... Why are the industrialists not in the government? Did we reform the government? 
guess we didn't. Ooh, this brings down our legitimacy. Yeah. This only a little bit. So we have to choose between the industrialists and the intelligentsia. But don't the industrialists also mean schooling? Yeah, they do. Okay, so if we just bring them in, that should work. I thought I had already done that, but I guess I didn't confirm that. All right, now can we get schools? We can get religious schools to start with. And then if we want to switch to public schools, we need empiricism and getting rid of state religion. And to get freedom of conscience, we would need to get the intelligentsia. Alright, uh, let's go for uh, religious schools then, to start with. Right? And we need a technology as well. We need a technology, yeah, I know about that. Um, we're already getting mechanical tools. What did you boiler or intensive agriculture? Or go for, where is it here? Empiricism. Let's go for empiricism. This takes 23 months. Okay. What do we have here? Bureaucratic shortfall again. Mass communication unlocked. That is great. Our country's institutions are growing out of bounds and we will eventually be overstretched. Until we are able to ensure sufficient bureaucracy for all of them, further institution growth will halt. Okay, so th this will halt. And we will get education as well. So we do need to get more bureaucracy. So we need to build more government administration or make them more efficient. That is what this is telling us. All right, we are already at the best we can do here. No, oh, we want professional bureaucrats. We might want to switch to secular administration, but then we need to get rid of the state religion. So, we need to build another government administration building. And I think uh, they don't have one yet, because they don't have an urban center. Okay, let's start that. Right, so now we have tuning workshops and we have the tobacco plantations. I think I'm actually gonna push this up. I get it, yeah, that means we will take longer to get the uh, achievement, but hey, we're not uh, in that much of a and on that note, I think it is time to wrap up this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as I'm fumbling around in Victoria 3. If you do, then um, if you did enjoy that, hit that like button. It helps the algorithm, helps other people discover my tiny channel. But it is growing, so apparently there are people interested in long-form content like this, which makes me happy. And I'll keep playing. See you next time.